Hey everybody, welcome back. It's MJ here at Just Plain Fun. And hopefully you have already watched the first installment for the number 78 rabbit slash rebate planes. And if you haven't, go back and watch that one. Or go ahead and watch this one. You don't have to watch them in any particular order. But what I want to do is I want to actually break this up into three parts. Originally I was thinking two, now I'm thinking three. So this one's going to be part two and it's going to be kind of a show and tell. And we're just going to talk about rabbit joints in general and then cover just kind of a show and tell of some of the different planes that you can use to make a rabbit joint and of course that can be going against the grain or going with the grain in the example of say shiplap so let's jump jump in if you've watched very many of my videos you already know that i lean heavily towards stanley that's just part of who i am and that's what we're going to talk about but stanley and a lot of other manufacturers made a lot of planes that did very similar things, sometimes the exact same thing. And what I want to do, like I said, is kind of a show and tell, show you some different options that you have at your disposal that you can use to make rabbit joints. Starting with the 190. And this little guy right here, actually, that's kind of a big guy. You'll notice it's different from the 78 because it's only got one station versus two. So I don't know if it's a suplex, I don't know, a single versus a duplex and there's no fence so that's one of the main things that's different on this one it does use the depth stop that is identical to the number 78 and that works for all of or the next few planes that i'm about to cover the thing with the 180 the one and only difference between the 180 and the 190 is the presence of this spur right here so if you have a 180 it's not going to have that if you have a 190 it is so in other words this one's going to be a lot better for going across the grain because you have that spur in order to cut the wood fibers first before you go on. And the 180 obviously does not have that. The same thing applies for the 191 versus the 181 is going to be the presence of the spur. And incidentally, if you go on to www.supertool.com or if you just Google Patrick Leach's blood and gore, he actually goes through the specs and talks about, you know, the, the different widths of these irons for the 191 versus the 192 versus the 190 and then he talks about the 180 and the 190 the reason why i'm not going to go into those is because one it would take too long and i'm not going to bore everybody with those details and you can just go to www.supertool.com and you can read all about those to learn more about them but the main thing is i just wanted to show you and then highlight the fact that the 190 series are going to have the spur the 180 series is not going to and then again all of the depth stops and all of the depth stop screws are all the same so 180 181 one excuse me 182 and then same thing for the 190 series they're all the same one way that they are different is at least among themselves is as you can see the 192 specifically has the style of lever cap that screws on that is most similar to the way that the 39 series attaches. And that is one difference, whereas the, the 190 and the 191 do not have that style of lever cap. And as y'all can see, the shape of the blade is quite a bit different. And then, like I said, the widths on those, the width on the blade is gonna be different. And last and not least, you can see these are all beveled down style blades on those. So that's your kind of a, down and dirty on those particular rabbit planes and the 180 series by the way were only made for a limited period of time that's probably part of the reason why i don't have any because they just they don't come through the shop very often whereas the 190 series those were made for considerably longer and again you can see the timeline on those whether you go to john walter stanley book or if you go to uh patrick leach's blood and gore you can get all the specs on when those were made and next up, we have the 278 here. And this one is a little bit different. You can see that the, the blade advance mechanism on this one, at least this particular vintage of it, is a little different. And you can see that it's got the spurs on both sides. Incidentally, the, that spur is the same style as what you'll see on a number 50 right there. This one is a straight iron so it's not skewed we'll talk more about skewed irons here in a little bit and i have what i think is a fairly we'll say average size hand and as you can see this is not very comfortable at least for me 
I don't even know if I would be even be able to use this, at least with the finger hole. So if you have maybe longer hands or you know, maybe you're comfortable holding it a different way, you know what? I'm going to just throw it out there. If somebody is a, an avid 278 user and this is your go-to plane, you know, I want to hear about it. So whether in the YouTube comments or find me at Facebook at Just Plain Fun, the parts division, tell me about your 278. This one does come with a fence. And then the fact that it has the spurs on both sides, that is good so that you can, you know, use it for other applications. But all in all, me personally, I'm not a big fan. Maybe it's just because I haven't had a fully functioning one. And in addition to the fence, you can see where it does have the slot for the depth stop as well. So, and just like on the 78, the fence can be mounted on either side. So it is fairly universal if that's a plane that, that you get into. This next one is not Stanley made, although Stanley does make other shoulder planes. This one is obviously an infill plane. And again, this video is kind of a show and tell. But the main thing is, you know, when we're talking about rabbits, you need the blade to go all the way up to the edge there. And of course, this one doesn't have any spurs. So, you know, you'd have to cut those fibers by hand, maybe with a, a sharp, nice sharp marking gauge. But this is a good infill shoulder plane and it will definitely do the job. And as a side note, those infill planes have been around for a really long time. I'm going to go ahead and say before Stanley was even making shoulder planes. So they're obviously tried and true. This one I consider kind of the granddaddy of them all. As you can see, this is a fairly large plane as rabbit planes go. I mean, maybe it doesn't show as well on camera, but this is, this is beefier and it's bigger than a 78. And just like on the 278, this one's got the spurs on both sides. This one has a spur that's more like the, what you'll see on like a 10 and a quarter, or maybe I think a uh, dovetail plane. It, you know, they're angled. This one, you can put the depth stop on either side. You can see it's got the slot. Remember, I talked about that in the first video. So you can put the depth stop on either side. And then the big, big thing is this one's got a skewed iron. And so specifically when you're going across the grain, you are going to get a superior cut when you have a skewed iron. And that's why things like the number 39, for example, this is an actual dedicated dado plane. So it's going to have the spurs on both sides. And I know we're talking about rabbits, but I'm just showing as an example. So it's got space for the spurs on both sides. This one also has a skewed iron. And again, it's a, a dedicated dado plane. And when you're using, when you're going across the grain, when you have a skewed iron, you are going to have, you're going to get a superior cut. The 289 does have a unique fence. My understanding is that you can use a 78 fence with it, but the one that comes with it stock is quite a bit beefier than what you see on the 78. And of course, just like so many of these parts, they're just commonly missing because they get separated from the plane and then they get, you know, set in a drawer somewhere, they get lost to time or you know, the grandkids inherit the tools and they don't know what goes with what, et cetera, et cetera. They get thrown away. But if you have the means to acquire one, this one is arguably the best rabbit plane around if you're making a lot of rabbits. And again, cross grain, that dado cut, that, uh, excuse me, that, that skewed iron is going to be superior. And while we're on the subject of skewed irons, let's go ahead and talk about the 140 just for a minute. Just on the outside chance, you know, especially for some of the newcomers, beginners that maybe aren't familiar with this plane. This is a, a black plane with a skewed iron and it has the detachable side plate. So you can actually loosen these screws up and you can remove this side plate. And then you, once again, we're talking about rabbits. So your blade is going to go all the way up to the edge. This particular model, you know, the 140 made by Stanley is not going to have a spur. So again, you're back to having to cut the fibers by hand or through some other method. Incidentally, Lee Nielsen puts out a couple of options. So if you're looking for a contemporary plane, they've got a couple options. And as a matter of fact, their 140s, if I'm not mistaken, actually have fences as well. that screw onto the side of it. And then I believe their later ones have spurs for, you know, cutting fibers. And if I'm wrong on that, you know, somebody correct me. I'm, not, I'm sure y'all will. But yet again, that's another option for cutting your rabbits. And then, of course, with it being a block plane, 
it can serve you well in some other areas. So the theme of this series, naturally, we've been mostly talking about the 78 since it is kind of the most ubiquitous of the rabbit planes, you know, rabbits, filletsters, rebates, depending on where you're from. And this one will, you know, even though this is a craftsman, I um, believe it was made by Stanley. It's definitely in the Stanley design. And this one will hold up just as well as any Stanley rabbit plane that you're going to see around. So this being my actual user Stanley plane right here, my user number 78. And what I'm going to do in the third installment in this series is I'm going to talk about some of the ways that the 78 changed over the years. It might be slightly redundant from the first video, but I'm going to kind of take a, it's going to be kind of a pseudo type study look, although to the best of my knowledge, there is no official type study that has been produced on the number 78. So we've got a few more options that I want to go over. This is a 10 and a half. And of course, this is a bench plane. And as you can see, once again, following the theme, we're going all the way up against the edge with our iron. This one's canted a little bit to one side, but it's going all the way up to the edge there. And so if I was, say, doing some breadboard ends on a table, I might use this. I might at least rough it out or I might do, you know, some finishing work on it. It just depends. So, you know, you look at your application of what you're doing, especially if you're doing similar rabbit joints a lot or rabbit style joints, and then figure out which of the tools is going to serve you best for that. So we talked a little bit, about, or I mentioned shiplap earlier. This is some store-bought stuff because I just don't have enough time in my day to actually cut a whole bunch of these. So got some good old-fashioned shiplap here. If I was going to set this up, and if I was going to do a lot of shiplap, honestly, what I would do is... I would just use my number 45, especially if I'm shiplap in a wall, meaning that they're going to be long boards, you know, I'm going to chuck them up in my workbench and I'm just going to use a 45 to do those. But, you know, I use the example of like a breadboard end on a table where I might use my number 10 and a half or my number 10, depending on how long it is, or I might use a shoulder plane like so. So it really just kind of depends. And, you know, we talked earlier about, you know, going with the grain versus going across the grain. So that's going to have an impact on which one I choose as well. But the great thing about it, and if you watch some of these videos out there on YouTube where they actually show, you know, employing the plane is on a lot of these, you can actually go on either angle, I guess you might say. So you can set it up like so. And you can, you know, make sure that you've got a nice tight corner there in order to have a good joint by just turning the plane on its side, like so, especially after you've got it roughed out. And if you're blessed enough to have multiple tools at your disposal, then, you know, you might use one plane to go on on one direction and then or on one edge and then use a different plane to go on the other one. The most important thing, of course, is going to be Making sure that you keep it sharp. You got to have some nice sharp spurs. If you're going across the grain, you got to have a nice sharp blade. You can't stress that enough. And, you know, we talked earlier about, you know, the presence of the spur. Obviously, if you're doing a lot of shiplap, then it's not going to matter if you have that spur because you're going with the grain. So you don't have to worry about cutting the fibers. But anytime that you want to switch it up and go across the grain, obviously having that spur is going to be a nice thing. So last and certainly not least... I'll talk about the 378 here real quick. This one is naturally incomplete because that's usually how I buy planes. And then I'll either put them back together or I'll sell off the good parts off of them. This 378 is actually a weather stripping plane. And as you can see, it's got the two rods, meaning that the fence theoretically is going to be held better, more in a more sturdy fashion there and you're not going to have to worry about it moving. I haven't had my fence move around a lot on me on the 78, the times that I've used it. So I don't think it's super, super important. The, you know, excuse me, record makes a 778 that actually has the two rods like that. But again, this is a weather stripping plane. And that's not to say that it couldn't cut regular rabbits, but that's not what it's designed for. It comes with a couple, three different depth stops there, 
just like on some of the other ones I've showed you, the depth stop can go on either side. And this one does not have a spur there. And that's something that you'll have to take into account. But, you know, honestly, who's doing weather stripping by hand anymore these days? I think, honestly, I think it's mostly collectors that are going to go after stuff like that. The folks that have set out and they said they're, you know, I'm going to collect one of every plane that Stanley ever made. But on the topic of weather stripping, there is such a thing as a W78. I don't have one, but it is a 78 that is set up more for weather stripping. And so when you see that W moniker in the front of virtually any type of plane that, that Stanley made, and they did make a lot. You know, if you read through about rabbit planes, rebate planes in on uh, supertool.com, you'll see Stanley made a lot of options, both for rebate plane, rabbit planes, and the weather stripping versions of them. So there you have it. A little show and tell. Some of the different options that are out there for rabbit planes, rebate planes. You know, those terms are, are synonymous with each other, just depending on where you live. And I would be remiss if I didn't mention that for a lot of these that I've talked about, I do have parts for them. So, for example, these are irons for some of your other rabbit planes, your 190 series, uh, 191, 192, things like that. I've got a few different, especially 192s. I've got a lot of options, those if you happen to need a lever cap or something like that. Right now, as of the time of this filming, which is in kind of mid-December of 2021, I don't have a lot of depth stops available but it is something that i pick up anytime that i see them out in the wild but most other parts as far as some of the different irons for 78s um, got a lot of fences things like that so if that's something that you need and you're watching this again in late 2021 early 2022 feel free to reach out just plain fun the parts division on facebook and then you can always get me in the comment section on youtube i am active on both reddit and instagram so lots of different ways to get a hold of me and i'm working on a more i guess available email that i don't mind publishing so that's coming in the near future okay this is the last one i promise this uh, little 75 clone just hollered out said that want, he wanted to be in the, the video as well so this is a little number 75 clone this was actually made by amt and of course, Stanley made these as well, but fitting with the theme of rabbits. And this is a, a smaller plane, so especially in tight spaces, this one's a little easier to employ. Just like all the rest, gives you a nice sharp blade and you'll be in good shape there. And like always, want to thank everybody for watching. I really appreciate all the time that y'all spend, you know, hopefully soaking up this, this knowledge and, and seeing these pictures and everything. Can't tell you how much I appreciate it, and I look forward to seeing you all out there. Thanks.